In 2023, the Marvel Cinematic Universe officially brought X-Men into the picture through the movie The Marvels. The film features a post credit scene and will explain what it shows and how it impacts the future of the MCU. This scene hints at the possibility of a new phase called X-Men Rise of Mutants in Phase 5 and beyond. In the Marvel's post credit scene, two new characters are introduced to the MCU, contributing to the larger narrative of the multiverse saga in Phases 4, 5, and 6. The scene connects with the overarching theme of the multiverse saga, which involves various heroes and villains navigating through different dimensions within the Marvel multiverse. While one character's identity is immediately clear to longtime Marvel movie viewers, the other may pose a challenge for those unfamiliar with Marvel comics. This adds an element of mystery and intrigue to the post credit scene, keeping fans curious about the unfolding developments. Notably, the Marvels doesn't delve into the multiverse saga's primary antagonist, Kang, and his various iterations. However, it does focus on one of the central heroes, who finds themselves trapped in a parallel reality after playing a crucial role in saving the universe. This situation sets the stage for new and complex challenges within the multiverse, leaving viewers eager to see how these events will unfold in the upcoming phases of the MCU. The post credit scene teases a continuation of the multiverse storyline, promising exciting developments and surprises in Phase 5 and beyond. In the mid credit scene, following the resolution of the reality rift caused by Darben and the Quantum Bands, Monica Rambeau becomes trapped in a parallel reality. Upon awakening, she finds herself in a mysterious white room where her mother, Maria Rambeau, played by Lashana Lynch, is seated beside her bed. This setup mirrors the moment when Monica, during Thanos' snap, was by Maria's hospital bed while her mother battled cancer. However, this version of Maria is unfamiliar with Monica and goes by the name Binary. As the scene progresses, X-Men's Beast, portrayed by Kelsey Grammer from the Fox franchise, makes an appearance. The scene includes nods to the X-Men, such as a door and references to Charles Xavier, contributing to the integration of X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The mid credit scene concludes by revealing Binary's full view and her costume faithfully adapted from the comics, leaving audiences excited about the potential developments and crossovers involving X-Men in the MCU. Binary, as introduced in Marvel Comics, originally represented a supercharged iteration of Captain Marvel. In the comics, when Carol Danvers lived with the X-Men, she was captured and experimented on by extraterrestrial beings known as the Brood. These experiments endowed Carol with enhanced cosmic powers, establishing a connection with a white hole. With this newfound power, she assumed the identity of Binary. In later comic storylines, Binary transformed into a duplicate of Captain Marvel formed by Carol focusing her energy. Regarding the MCU's adaptation of the character, it appears that they might draw inspiration from Binary's earlier comic origin, especially considering her association with the X-Men. However, the MCU's take on Binary, portrayed by Lashana Lynch, is likely to be a variant of Maria Rambo rather than Carol Danvers. This divergence from the comics sets the stage for Lynch's return to the MCU as a member of the X-Men in the alternate reality. Kelsey Grammer makes a return as Beast in the Marvel's credit scene, reprising the role he previously played in the Fox X-Men franchise. Grammer first portrayed Dr. Hank McCoy, also known as Beast, in X-Men The Last Stand with a brief appearance in X-Men Days of Future Past. In the X-Men series, Hank McCoy starts as a student at Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters before becoming a teacher, a mutant, and a member of the X-Men. His character in The Last Stand even holds the position of Secretary of Mutant Affairs. The connection between the version of Beast in the Marvels and the one established in the Fox X-Men franchise remains unclear, as it has not been confirmed which universe Monica ended up in. Clues in the Marvel's credit scene suggest a potential link to the Fox X-Men universe. Kelsey Grammer's return, the use of theme music from X2 X-Men United and Days of Future Past, and the design of the X-Men door resembling the Fox movies all hint at this connection. The Marvel's concludes with a unique audio tag during the credits, featuring the sounds of Flurkin Kittens. Unlike traditional scenes, this audio addition recalls a similar practice in Avengers Endgame. 
where Iron Man's armor sounds played at the end of the credits, serving as a tribute to the hero who played a pivotal role in launching the MCU. In the Marvels, the Flurkin audio serves as a humorous reference to a light-hearted sequence in the movie where the heroes utilize Flurkins to evacuate the Sabre space station. The future appearances of characters from the Marvels in the MCU are yet to be officially confirmed, but speculations abound regarding their potential roles. Given Carol Danvers' status as a powerful Avenger, it is likely that Captain Marvel will make her next appearance in Avengers The Kang Dynasty. As one of the strongest heroes in the MCU, her involvement would be crucial in the battle against Kang. Now, don't come to the conclusion that Kang might not be happening because Jonathan Majors got fired. Most likely, Marvel will bring in another actor to play Kang. The current status of the Avengers in the MCU remains unclear since the team hasn't been seen post-Endgame. Miss Marvel, portrayed by Kamala Khan, is expected to return, possibly in a Young Avengers movie or TV show. The ending of the Marvels set up a spin-off featuring young superheroes, indicating that Miss Marvel's future is likely tied to the Young Avengers. Whether the team is formed off-screen, during Avengers 5, or in a standalone story is yet to be revealed. A potential Miss Marvel Season 2 could explore the formation of the Young Avengers. Monica Rambeau and the X-Men, existing in a parallel reality, may return to connect with the MCU storyline. Given the overarching multiverse saga, their involvement could occur in Avengers The Kang Dynasty, or at the latest, Avengers Secret Wars. There's speculation about their potential appearance in Deadpool 3, as set photos suggest it may explore an X-Men story spanning the multiverse. The X-Men's introduction into the MCU has been a highly anticipated development, and although ownership complexities have been resolved, the X-Men movie timeline, previously under 20th Century Fox, depicted the struggle for equality faced by mutants in a world that feared and discriminated against them. With Disney now owning the X-Men, hints and references have been made in the MCU, such as a Wolverine Easter egg in She-Hulk Attorney at Law and the introduction of Earth-838's Professor X in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Recent reports suggest that the process of finding writers for the MCU X-Men movie is underway, with pitch meetings set for fall 2023. However, the construction of the movie is expected to be a meticulous process, indicating that the release may not be immediate. Jeff Loveness, the writer for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and Avengers The Kang Dynasty, clarified that the X-Men won't appear in the latter. Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios, has been cautious in revealing specifics about the X-Men's introduction, but hinted at more mutant occurrences in the coming years. Feige teased the arrival of Wolverine and Deadpool in the MCU with their introduction planned in Deadpool 3, featuring Hugh Jackman's return as Wolverine alongside Ryan Reynolds. While no specific release date has been announced for Marvel's X-Men, it's speculated to debut in Phase 7 of the MCU, likely in the second half of 2026. However, there's precedent for MCU movies to be released between the final Avengers movies of a saga. The timeline is yet to be fully unveiled, leaving room for surprises and potential announcements before the completion of Phases 5 and 6. And that's what concludes today's video. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next one. Feel free to share your suggestions for future videos in the comments below.